Welcome back, Vintage Gamers, to a Vintage Preliminary event. Uh, these 2 p.m. Eastern Preliminaries are firing with very tough competition. 22 players uh, today, uh, including some of the names you'll see uh, winning challenges. So uh, good, high-quality testing uh, and also gives you qualification points. These qualification points will let you play in the two remaining Vintage Showcase events. Uh, and also can you can use them to pay for uh, super qualifiers as well, one of which will be on... Uh, like 129 or, or some, sometime, sometime pretty soon. Um, worth noting, after talks with uh, the developers over at Daybreak, we are getting more vintage prelims. Uh, Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, and Wednesday, 6 p.m. Uh, sorry, Monday, Monday, 5 p.m. Pacific, and Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, so uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, on Monday, Wednesday, starting January 30th. Uh, we will be getting two more slots of Vintage Prelims. That's really good news for you, the viewers, because it means I'll likely be streaming on Mondays uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern and, and streaming for a short uh, preliminary event every Monday. Um, that'll help me make sure I have a stream for every upload schedule uh, and help me build a, a backlog out, which I really need to do because I don't have one. Um, I am just going to play uh, a high power deck today, uh, try hard day. I'm going to play Squee. I do need qualification points. Uh, Squee is a you know a very strong polarizing uh, deck. Has very good matchups and very bad matchups. Uh, it is a Mulligan to Bizarre Baghdad deck that utilizes Squee and Master of Death to offset the card disadvantage of Bizarre of Baghdad, and resulting in a tempo slash controlling. Uh, a deck that is going to play a bunch of zero mana pitch spells that counter and stop what your opponent is doing while playing free creatures in Hollow One, Rootwalla, and Rootwalla, and also bringing back free Venge Vines. Uh, this deck is really good against combo, uh, really bad against other bizarre decks typically, uh, but there are obviously exceptions along the way. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm an expert in this deck, but it's a deck I have uh, dabbled in in the past, and I do know you know the basic idea. this this is a pretty reasonably stock list. Uh, I'm choosing in my flex slots to play like Noxious Revival four, Snapback one, and Mindbreak Trap four, Vigor four. I think those are typically where you see some amount of flexibility in the main. I'm choosing to play just a uh, uh, consistency in game one with uh, these as my flex slots. and then in the sideboard, You've got a, a large amount of graveyard cards, uh, answers to Lavinia and Shieldred and Caracas. Uh, good thing to pitch uh, to get off of the initiative or ghost quarters in uh, a basic. And some more abilities to bounce or kill creatures. Uh, I think it's pretty, it's fairly stock list, so nothing out of the ordinary there. Let's see what happens in this vintage prelim. If you'd like to see your deck played on this channel, check out the Patreon link in the description below where you can find all the information you need to submit a donation deck list. Let's battle. All right, here's round one of the prelim with uh, Squee. Control Bazaar. I uh, might be talking a little bit less and cutting in and out. I'm not 100% sure here. We'll see how this, this filming goes. But uh, uh, we have to mulligan to Bazaar, and we have a powder, so we powder. We still don't have a Bazaar, so we mulligan. We have a Bazaar, so we keep... Opponent uh, also is on a mold of six. Our mulligan, we're probably just going to put this... Uh, hmm, interesting, actually. I do like the idea of having green card force, blue card force. So maybe I'll just put back this Rootballa, and we'll just play a grindy game utilizing Squee and Bazaar. Kind of an odd one, but I like having the idea of having double force here on the draw. Nice, they're playing blue. Just gonna activate this. Nice. So I am gonna put back the strip mine for the same reason I just stated, and we're gonna put five free power in play. 
and then recur our squee every turn to offset our bizarre Baghdad, making it a faithless looting every turn for free. Also turning our hollow one into a zero mana four four. Seems fair. <laughs> Maybe Doomsday? Mm. I think this is still going to be a pre-attack activation. It doesn't have to be, but I was thinking maybe Vengevine things might happen. I'm going to put another 4 power in play. Um, but I'm thinking I might keep double Noxious Revival instead of Vigor, if I'm assuming they are on Doomsday and not... Um, Like a Tinker deck, which maybe that's silly, but I think this will go farther for me than a Vigor. Uh, there's a possibility I could hold this Hollow One in an attempt to bring back Vine, but I think presenting nine damage is better. It means they'll have to Doomsday and win on the same turn. And we do have one hard counter and two soft, I don't know how you explain this, soft counters maybe? All right, so I was uh, completely wrong. My opponent is actually on a Tinker deck. Um, I might get pretty punished here for pitching our Vigor instead. I really didn't think they'd be... Oh, wait, they're just going to play a Mana Crypt and pass. Don't really know what that means. Maybe it means like a Hull Breacher is coming or something. I don't know what that means. Um, I did hit a Root Walla, so I theoretically... Could return our vine, and the vine would be 4, 8, 12, 13. It wouldn't be lethal, so I'm not going to activate this bazaar. Um, I, I think they're representing Hull Breacher. I'm just going to pass the turn. I guess a vine it is Hull Breacher. Okay, so I am going to activate now because I do want to translate into another counter spell or something. I would have actually uh, been able to return my vine, <laughs> uh, but I would not have. Yeah, you know, I would not have drawn these cards with a whole return response. So, I guess maybe I'm still supposed to go for it because my opponent does have a mana crypt in play. I think the the likelihood of returning vine is not like super high, but um. I don't know. Maybe maybe I made a mistake there. Alright, well, I'm not really worried about uh, Tinker at 6 life anyways, so I think I'm in a good spot. If my opponent had, like, maybe Fetch, I would have put the Fetch land back on top of their library, but they don't have any cards to Noxious Revival. I don't exactly know what these Noxious Revivals are really doing here, and I assume my opponent probably has a Force, but maybe they would have forced a Hollow One. I don't know. I'm pretty happy that I didn't activate into a whole, like what felt like a hole breacher, so maybe it's fun. Ah. All right. Well, I'm going to try to not let this happen. Wow. Spell Pierce. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it was better than snapbacking. I, mean, I think my opponent is still in trouble. Um, this is going to shuffle. So my Noxious Revivals are not really doing anything right. Uh, all right. They also didn't lose their flip. All right. I mean, my opponent gets seven mana. I mean, if they can take infinite turns, they probably win this game. If they can't take infinite turns, they probably lose based on the onboard attackers. I guess I could have put something from my graveyard. It doesn't really do anything. Yeah, okay. So my opponent had the, uh, the two-card combo. Okay. 
kind of happy we got our Venge Vine into play. See what our opponent ends up doing. Uh, this matchup is kind of annoying because my opponent is deck is like one of the few decks that are still on like the very heavy whole breacher plan. They play a bunch of whole breachers and a bunch of shieldreds, which are pretty good against my uh, deck entirely based on Bizarro Baghdad. Uh, but I don't think it's that bad. I think you're still probably favored as the as the the anti combo anti control player. Let's see what our opponent does to us here. It does look like my opponent's on the blue black version, so probably four whole breacher two shieldred. There's the Shieldred, and here's a Merchant Scroll for an Ancestral, I assume. That'll gain them a ton of life. That might be good enough. And we don't really want to activate our... We can't really activate our Bazaar anymore, so... Is that just enough life to, to beat me here? They block Hollow One and Vengevine and take seven. And then they actually are one life ahead of the Mana Crypt still? Wow. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I could have played this game very differently. Um, the only thing I could have done is the Force of Vigor. I could have kept Force of Vigor and went to Force of Vigor their Mana Crypt, which I don't think was a huge deal. I think that's the only change we could have really made, right? If we had activated our Bazaar before combat, we would have gotten Hold Breacher. That would have been bad. Yeah, I don't know. I think this is how this, we played this game out correctly. I have used my snapback, so I don't have a snapback for Shieldred right now, um, which is pretty unfortunate. I'd definitely like to be able to snapback Shieldred. Post board, we have. Opponent's pretty deep in the tank. I <laughs> didn't have to find another fetch land. Uh, my opponent having triple uh, underground sea without fetches has actually really made a difference for them. Uh, as They just haven't lost as much life as they really should have. I think we lose this game because the gain two life every turn is probably enough. Eats the Hollow One, eats the Venge Vine, maybe taking seven, going to six. Or eats the Hollow One, eats the Root Walla, takes ten, going to... I mean, they wouldn't do that. They're going to probably trade the whole Breacher for the Vine, because I still really can't activate into Bazaar. Or, sorry, I guess I can. It's just I just lose life. I can activate into Shielder, but I can't activate into whole Breacher. Interesting. Yeah, my opponent gained like a million life just from... Uh, drawing Shieldred plus Ancestral plus Top. Really unfortunate. Don't really know if there was much of a uh, thing we could have done about that. Alright, well... No matter what I do here, I'm just attacking all, or I have no chance of winning. So, let's get in there. I don't really have a bizarre activation anyways, because... Okay, they're going to eat two things and take ten? That cannot be right. That just puts them on a mana crypt flip for lethal. I hate this play. I would much rather have them traded Hole Breacher for Revenge Vine. Because the Shieldred draw is after the Mana Crypt upkeep flip. So if they, they're 50-50 to lose this game now. Yeah, I really dislike this block from them. I think it's okay to allow me to Bizarre Activate. 
Especially with only one card in hand and no squeeze. Oh, they have a, a draw spell. This is still not going to be in their hand on the upkeep, though. So this is still a 50-50 flip to win the game. Tinker, sure. All right. So this is 50-50 to win the game if they don't have a, a, a brainstorm in their hand. They lost the flip and lost. Okay. I mean, uh, sometimes your opponent can win the game for you. Uh, like I said, I, I think I would have wanted them to do a different set of blocks. Uh, that being said, I'm going to bring in Snapback and I'm going to bring in Caracas as additional ways to answer those threats. Um, and then we're just going to keep the, the, the rest of this configuration. Um, I don't, I kind of want all of the counter magic. So I think the only place you really would trim is Noxious. You only really want Noxious against Wasteland decks. It does make your Force of Vigors harder to hit, but I think that's okay as well. I don't think this stuff is what I want. Let's try this. No, I'm no expert though. Um, I say check out maybe Montolio's uh, Vine videos if you want to have a more accurate opinion on sideboarding. I'm just going to go with my gut instinct. Haven't played a lot of Squee recently, but it is a deck I do enjoy playing. Game two. I don't have a bizarre bag to add, so we will do the mulliganing. When we're allowed to, of course, our opponent gets to mulligan first. Let's mulligan. Uh, okay, let's well, powder. I'm going to elect to keep the hollow one. I don't really have a heuristic on what's the best keep. I would say, like, the things I would keep are Hollow One, Master, and Force. Force seems like a pretty reasonable one, but I think Hollow One is just pretty much the strongest card in this deck. Another No Bazaar hand. Uh, another No Bazaar hand. Let's Powder. Let's keep in Force, Force. I think uh, specifically Force of Will is pretty important in this matchup because of Hold Reacher. Okay, keep. And let's see what our opponent does to us. We do need to be worried about uh, Sideboard Tabernacle. We need to be worried about fast mana uh, into uh, Hull Breacher. We need to be worried about fast mana into Shieldred. We need to be worried about Needle. Um, our way to get rid of this Needle is going to be a uh, you know a counter on the stack or a Vigor. But we did just lose two of our Vigors to our Powders. So uh, I'm going to start by just trying to keep them off mana. Definitely super behind in this game. Uh, Needle on the play is definitely one of the best things you can possibly uh, try to resolve against this this style of deck. Uh, Needle on the draw, not as strong. But we had to mulligan. We lost some vigors. We didn't keep a hand that had a force, which puts us in a spot where we are uh, definitely not favored to win this game. If they don't have a, uh, a follow-up mana source, uh, we do have some more gameplay. But... <sighs> Losing two Vigors uh, to Powder is definitely going to be rough, oh, especially if they follow up. Well, I guess we have a Shirt Mind for that. I was going to say, especially if they follow up with that. Wow, they have ma mana too. I think they were uh, thinking about how to play around Vigor, but you probably just don't. And a key, okay. Down to three cards now. Well, luckily we still have another uh, strip mine effect. We did draw a blue card for a force. So not a bad spot, all things considered. Definitely not a favorable spot, but um, I feel like we have a long-term game plan. If opponent doesn't play another saga, if play, opponent plays another saga, I think we are in you know in deep deep, deep trouble. 
but I think my game plan in this game is if I don't have to counter anything, which is the ideal situation, which doesn't look like I will, they're out of lands, um, then I'm going to just draw to hand size, uh, pitch my Vengevine to hand size, and then start uh, pitching Masters to hand size. Once we have two Masters, we can actually pitch two Root Wallas um, to hand size and then bring back Vengevine. This is a card I'm I am definitely willing to negate, though, which is going to set back my plan quite a lot, but it's going to let my opponent fix their deck, which right now their deck doesn't really function. All right, so back to going to hand size. I don't think playing any of this out really matters, uh, and I'd rather work towards an eight-card hand. Hopefully my opponent doesn't draw, you know, the answers or the, the, the mana to play cards in any reasonable opportunity, reasonable amount of time. But at that point, they're probably drawing forces, so things do get challenging. We do draw another force in blue card. Um, so that's something. We also kind of need the master to execute the Vengevine plan, so... All right, another miss. Powder, that's a miss. All right, so let's see if they find something this turn. I would rather not negate something if I can help it. Help it. I'd like to hold my negation uh, to a point where I can vigor this needle and have negation up. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to negate that. I think that's probably the worst thing that could happen to us. Uh, that gives them the ability to like play a, a non-creature spell and have Fluster. There's a lot of things that can go badly if that exists. Uh, if they have Force, I kind of suspect that they'll Force back and try to make a play and push towards winning the game. Um, uh, uh, the best possible... Yeah, so they had, fluster, they had Fluster Storm and Force. So the best outcome here is if my opponent cracks this for black and plays a Shieldred. Because uh, then I have a, a single answer. It looks like they're going to hold and play a uh, Ballista, maybe. Not a Ballista, sorry. Uh, a Breacher. Or maybe they're just holding. Interesting. They're willing to force over Lotus, but they're not willing to play anything after. That's kind of odd. I don't know what that really means. Maybe <laughs> this kind of exposes Lotus to, like, a variety of bad things. Like a Vigor. Like, if you if I'm forcing over that, and you force back, and then I Vigor at end of turn your Lotus and your Needle, it's pretty bad. But maybe they had a second Fluster Storm they wanted to represent. That's possible. All in all, I think we're very dead. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to play on through here, because I don't have no reason to give up hope right now. Okay, now we're dead. <laughs> Yeah, that wasn't going to win the way that was going. I uh, still think I want the same setup. Traps and vigors and snapbacks and stuff. Uh, we might want Ghost Quarter for Saga. Kind of feels bad to me, though. I don't know if that's a true statement or not. If like you're supposed to bring Ghost Quarter in for Saga, I think I'd rather not. But that might be part of the point of Ghost Quarter. I don't really know. Mm, yep. Keep. Two powder is obviously not ideal, but... Definitely going to keep a seven card bizarre hand. Hopefully, we'll draw into more counters and more zero drops. All right, my opponent immediately had a ley line. So, my opponent's deck has bizarre, or sorry, has needle and ley line. That's kind of odd. Um, I mean, I'm still going to activate bizarre with my multiple powders in my hand here. I'm um, just going to go put a creature in play. Bizarre, uh, Ley Lines quite good here. I did not expect my opponent to also have Ley Lines. Uh, this seems... Now I would rate this matchup as abysmal. <laughs> Ley Lines, Needles. 
Tabernacles, Hole Reachers, Shieldreds, Tinkers, probably for Sphinx. This matchup seems atrocious. Hmm. Yo, in danger. Uh, this is probably a play wasteland and pass angle, holding up uh, my blue counter magic. Do you have a basic island? You do have a basic island. Okay. This is going to be an extremely hard game to win. They kept seven, too. They kept seven card Leyline Hand. I guess our seven card Bizarre Hand. Only fair. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to hit this on the stack. No reason to let them have extra mana. Mm. I'm interested in activating here. There's some downsides, but that's a pretty reasonable upside. Um, I think I'm going to just take away one of the snap. I guess there's no reason to keep the master over the snapback unless I was to draw Vigor, and now it doesn't really look like we're going with Vigor. This should help against some explosiveness. Can't really protect this, but... Oh, they have a spell pierce. <laughs> okay. We're just getting wrecked by these spell pierces, but I guess they would uh, also wreck us if they were flusters, except for in this exact case. Hmm. This is bad. It's quite bad. Yeah, we gotta be super light low to win this game. Especially with the fact that these snapbacks don't actually like, stop a whole reacher forever. I'll reach your blocks. Everything is really bad. I'm just going to negate this. Might not need to negate this, to be honest, but I think it's fine. Are oh, they going to fight back over it? Interesting. They have one card plus this plus Narsa. I'm going to attack Narset with my uh, Root Walla. And then I'm going to pass. And Squee can have some pretty polarizing matchups. I mean, this matchup... Like, it is bad, but it's not like it's not winnable. Like, we still can win. Uh, we have the cards to beat it. It's just uh, a lot of things that we don't want to enjoy playing against. I guess they don't have a Wasteland, so that makes it slightly better. But Saga in conjunction with effects like Leyline and Hold Reacher and that kind of thing is uh, definitely a viable path as well. Pretty brutal. They have a needle. A needle I don't care that much about, considering it's really hard for me to use Bizarre as is. Did actually draw a Vigor after all of that nonsense. Hmm. I don't know if we have enough time to really get a graveyard going in this game. But I will be able to maybe Vigor the Leyline and the Needle uh, if I draw a green card. They have a Tabernacle as well. Awesome. Oh, and they, and and they hit time twister uh, with not even an activation. I don't know. I think things have gone quite poorly for us. Um, I can draw one card and then discard three cards. That doesn't help me do anything, right? 
What a joke. Uh, all right. I'm just going to concede, I guess. I don't really think there's a reason to play this. It's not even like they use their Narset to find a Time Twister. They just natty hit the Time Twister. Brutal. What is a guy to do? My opponent has so much hate. Such reckless hate. I do think that like these whole Reacher decks would be a lot better if there were more functional, actual good wheels, but. With Time Twister being basically the only good wheel, it's like really rough. You basically have only one card that combos with your usually fairly meaningless cards. Obviously, Narset is not a fairly meaningless one, but a uh, whole Reacher can be pretty hit or miss. It's just no point, right? My opponent has a shield rid and a Narset. Even if I kill my opponent's uh, Leyline of the Void, I still have to be an active shield rid, an active tabernacle, and an active Narsa. I think this is just not worth my time. Very unfortunate. All right, right after we were slammed by bad matchup number one, we're going to get slammed by bad matchup number two. We've got uh, Eternal Weekend Champion Wizard 2002 probably playing Dredge. Uh, I consider Dredge to be an extremely poor matchup for this deck. Uh, but we do have lots of sideboard cards, so we'll see what happens. Uh, game 1s are extremely, extremely, extremely hard to win, uh, mostly because the opponent is utilizing their Bizarre Baghdads in a more powerful way than you are. Uh, but with a Wasteland and a Noxious Revival, maybe we do have a chance. Uh, we want to present a, a fast clock, and we want to Wasteland them off things, and it also definitely helps to be on the play. Uh, no point in having powders or trap here. Uh, I could probably have put a root wall in play, but I actually think the one damage over a couple of turns is probably going to matter less than being able to bring back a Vengevine. I don't know if that's a true statement. That was my gut instinct, but I'm kind of holding this and hoping to get a Vengevine. Unfortunately, my opponent, I was really hoping my opponent would have a hand with a lot of uh, interaction and not very much dredging. Uh, so then I could wasteland them and put a dredger back on top of their library instead. Uh, but it does not seem like that is the case here. They have two dredgers, so that might not happen. Uh, we're going to activate. We did hit a hollow one, which is good. I think this time I am going to just... Um, I don't think I need triple wasteland. I think at the most I need... No. This force is probably not useful anyways. Well, I guess it might be useful if they have a counter for a Noxious Revival that we end up using, but we don't have a blue card anyways right now. Um, so I don't know if that matters much. I'm going to cast this before showing Wasteland. Uh, it gives them less information to work with. They might not view this as a threat. We'll see. They do view this as a threat. Uh, okay. Well, now my Noxious doesn't get countered if I use my Noxious, so that's good. Uh, I'm not going to use this Noxious Revival in case that happens. Um, I can't actually stop this, but I can at least put a Dredger back on top instead, which might buy me another turn. I don't know if that is worthwhile. Like, I could always bring back a Hollow One if I wanted to. Let's put a, a Golgari Thug back on the top of their deck. Uh, so now they'll draw a thug for turn. I guess they, can, they can't dredge through it because then they'll dredge their bizarre way. So I just I turned off a, a draw step for a turn. I don't know if that's actually worthwhile, but it is what I chose to do. I did find a hollow one and a squee. Um, am I going to... I don't think there's any reason to show Wasteland. My opponent will get to activate Bazaar uh, and Dredge once here. 
and they didn't hit a dredger, so now they're going to pitch two dredgers, and they get a Narc Amoeba, and they did hit an Icarid. So they still only have the two dredgers, and they have a hollow one. Uh, for unfortunate, very unfortunate. Okay. Uh, draw for turn. Noxious again. Uh, I'm going to always pitch this bizarre, so unless it's better than... I mean, this is still probably worth activating. All right, these cards are bad. Actually, I could technically kill their hollow one. I think that's worse than Wasteland plus Noxious, so... Um... I don't think I'm going to attack my hollow one into their hollow one, though, because that will... not result in anything they're probably not on bridges but all right so they have seven dredges currently in the bank here i can once again uh noxious the thug let's uh first see what they do with this icarid okay nothing on the icarid okay i'm gonna noxious the thug again um this is just i'm just i'm just attempting to make it so they don't dredge into a win over time here so now they're going to draw the... They're going to dread... Oh, I guess that just dredges anyways. So maybe that's stupid. Yeah, maybe that was dumb. Maybe I was supposed to just put back a, a hollow one on top of my library. Uh, I'm just going to... Race... Obviously, I lose the creeping chills in this sense, but... I think that's fine. All right, well, I have my three squeeze, but I think it's too late. I guess I should have just blocked the hollow one with the Ruwala. So now my opponent gets to dredge four. Brings this back, dredges four. Yeah, I guess my Noxious Revival was bad. I don't think the two life was worth it. Um, What should I have done? I guess I could have just put back a hollow one. That might have been better. Because I am not even going to be able to really return all of these. Yeah, I think I played this game badly. I should not have put the thug on top because there was no point because they had a dredger already. Okay, it's good to know. Um, I'm going to at least... I'm just going to bring them all back. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to at least save this life here. Eh, I don't know. Doesn't probably doesn't matter very much. All right, triple root walla. I don't need triple root walla though. I think I just want one root or two root wallas to uh, block. So I still am dead to a uh, creeping chill, but I at least have them at eight and have two blocks. Yeah, I don't like. I don't like how I played this game. I don't know if we had winning chances if I played better, but. Okay, they didn't hit anything here besides... They did hit a Dredger, and they have another Icarid. So this puts me to three. This is coming in. These both chump. And then if I Avenge Vine, I win here. So I'm just going to draw all of these and attempt to win with Avenge Vine. I did not hit Avenge Vine. Uh, so now I am, am I just dead on board? Uh, they have two Icarids. They have a Grief and a Shell. So two Icarids have to come back. And then I'm dead on board. Okay, so I was close actually there. Um, I was a Vengevine away from having it work out. Hmm. I still think I played that game very badly, though. All right, so we're going to bring in all of this. We typically take out um, our, like our counter stuff. Typically take out all the blue cards. I think I'd rather play Fury. Um, do you want to keep in Mental Misstep? Um... I don't know what's the best here. I guess we could bring in Forest. I just don't think any of these cards are going to matter. I don't think a Snapback matters. Especially because we won't be able to pitch cast it. I'm just going to bring in this. I don't. I, this doesn't really map the way I hoped it would. 
I don't know what's different about my normal list. Maybe the my last list had more sideboard hate to bring in. I mean, this was how many cards? 12 cards. I guess it's because I have a Mind Break Trap and a Snapback in the main. Um, it made up for a more counter-oriented deck. All right. So then this is where the game gets weird. I brought in 12 cards. The matchup uh, assuredly gets better, uh, but the matchup gets weird where I just don't have the ability to uh, do stuff. Like, I think this is a keep. Turns this off. I technically have an answer to a hollow one. If they do remove this, I have Ghost Quarter Surgical for a bazaar. I think this is a keep. You don't want to play both ley lines because they just dies to vigor in the same way. Yeah, I'm just going to keep and put one ley line in and pass. I think that's crazy, but I do think this is how this matchup does go. Uh, yeah, I don't want to play Ghost Quarter in case they have Wasteland. Obviously, they mil they, mil they lost two Wastelands here, but... So the biggest problem with this hand is that if they have uh, Hollow Ones, uh, it's kind of bad for me. I do technically have an answer to a Hollow One, though. The other problem is that if they don't remove the Ley Line, then um, my Ghost Quarter Surgical Plan doesn't really work. I don't know if I'm just supposed to go quarter this bizarre anyways. Probably am. Is this a vigor? No. All right. So I'm going to go quarter this bizarre so they don't have a million things that goes into exile. And then we pass. Uh, we can pitch our root water hand size. We can pitch our master of death to hand size. Am I getting vigored? I am getting vigored. Um, this could be the worst possible outcome where my opponent vigors my ley line and then has a second bazaar and I don't have a wasteland anymore. They don't have a second bazaar. Okay, that's good. That would have been a, a nightmare outcome for sure. All right, so we're both going to hand size now and I have some surgicals, which should put me at the advantage. Uh, I am just going to, I think I'm just going to put the one, one in play. All right, they're still going to hand size. One more turn for them. Uh, we have not drawn the bazaar yet. I'm just going to... I don't think I want the... I think I'd rather get the second power in play than hold for fury because they would have to draw bazaar for that to matter. All right, so... They're going to clean up. They have a stinkweed imp. Uh, I will probably surgical... I don't know if I will surgical the Stinkweed Imp. I'm going to play this so I don't... Just hand size. I can just surgical things they hit off the Stinkweed Imp, so I kind of want them to dredge so they don't hit a Bazaar. All right. They hit up a Narcomiva and an Icarid. So the one of the problems with this is counter magic and Noxious. This hits all the Narc Amoebas, and then I can maybe hit all of the Icarids. I guess if they have... Okay, so they're not, they're going to save their Narc Amoebas. Which is fine. I guess it's not really fine, because they're going to dredge into another one. Huh. But then they'll just Icar it into another one. This looks really bad for me. I don't think I have enough surgicals for this plan to work. <laughs> Maybe I should have just gone for the stink. I can't go for the stink anymore. I guess I can still go for the stink now. And that way they can't dredge into the Narc Amoeba. And I got one from their hand. It's pretty lucky. Oh, I guess they're not going to dredge into the Narc Amoeba if I shuffle, but... All right. 
So getting one from their hand is really good because it's going to make it so it's another turn before they bring anything back. I hit my Bazaar. Uh, what did they have in their hand? They had a Wasteland. I mean, this Bazaar is nuts, so... And I hit another Surgical. Okay, I don't think we can lose this game now. I think we're definitely really ahead in this one. Had all the it was an interesting keep for sure. I don't know if I played optimally, but uh, it was definitely a reasonable way to pass forward or pass forward. What does that even mean to push forward? Uh, this hand, I don't think, is enough. Let's mulligan this. Uh, I could keep this one. And I'm gonna bottom the card that doesn't do anything. Okay, so my opponent is talking about how they had Force of Vigor the turn that I had Leyline out. But they thought I had Surgical, so they chose to let the Bazaar get exiled instead of Vigoring in response. Interesting. Interesting. So the problem with this hand is I don't have a Wasteland or a Ley Line. But I have a Surgical and a Vigor, so I don't think I'm supposed to force it. Or I don't think I'm supposed to get rid of this hand. I don't think I'm supposed to use a Vigor on this either vine vine root walla and then unfortunately for my squee you get pitched to fury hopefully i don't get surgical i don't get surgical uh i kill your hollow one and then i still have a surgical and i have a wasteland so I don't know if that could have gone better for me. That feels like pretty close to the ideal scenario. That's a Narc Amoeba. That's a Creeping Chill and an Icarid. All right, so I just hit the Narc Amoeba with Surgical. Mine, Wasteland, Bazaar. Okay, I mean, second Bazaar could be annoying, but they won't get anything back this turn because all the Narcomibas are gone. Um, They will get to go to 15, 15, and then they get to... Oh, I guess they get to bring back Silver Smoke Ghouls. Shit. Uh, maybe we are losing this then. Because now there's three Amalgams entering play. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I could have beaten that besides... Wow. Uh, am I just dead? I put them to... I'm just going to lose this game. Nine, twelve... Uh, I did I fuck up? I don't think so. I think that dredge was just too good. Needed a ley line. I 
I can hit surgical still. Didn't hit surgical. They still have double bizarre to hit all their creeping chills too, so I think we're just dead on board, right? This technically blocks one of the things, but if they hit any creeping chills, we lose, and they have they're gonna they have a Golgari Grave Troll and Double Bizarre that's gonna through their whole deck. I needed to hit another surgical to stop the amalgams from coming in. That was the only real out here. Yeah, they can just stretch their whole deck with two bizarres and a draw step here, so nothing really matters. Uh, yeah, it's a tough matchup. I think I just needed to have a ley line. I don't think I'm ever mulliganing my hand. It felt correct to keep my hand, but my opponent's dredges and bizarre. Like they had two bizarres, and their dredges were just super insane. So, why are they giving me another turn? What does that do? I don't think it matters because they had another answer to my second bazaar as well. All right. We're dead again. All right. Well, we're down here in the O2 bracket with our good friend Sandy Dog. That probably means they're on oops all spells, which means we finally get a good matchup. <laughs> Let's get killed, anyways. Uh, this hand doesn't have a bizarre Baghdad, though. It does have a pretty good hand against oops all spells. Uh, I, I don't think I could in the blind keep this hand uh, without knowing for sure. Like, if they just end up on mono white, this could be really, really uh, unfortunate. So, let's mulligan. Uh, we are still going to just look for a... Um, we are we are still... You know, our primary goal is to look for a hand that is... Has a bizarre. Um, Post-board, with knowing... Uh... Sorry, I got distracted by Oops All Size Bubble Guys. Sorry, I got distracted by Oops All Spells uh, sideboarding techniques here. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Powdering. Uh, my opponent did keep their seven, which is good because now I... Or not good, but now I don't have to worry as much about uh, them mulliganing to a hand that's good against me. I'm going to just do this and powder. Uh, I did keep a bizarre hand that doesn't actually have a counter magic in it. It's still probably a keep. Uh, we have a blue card. We just need to draw a piece of counter magic. And we get to put in a bunch of free power. I think this is worth it. Uh, we obviously could lose this game by just not drawing a counter magic counter spell and my opponent killing us on turn one. Uh, I think I'm willing to take that risk. It's definitely a risk. We're willing to take a... Uh, again, like my opponent may or may not be on oops all spells. Uh, especially if they're on like mono white. This hand definitely looks a lot better. I'll have to see. Um, all right. Uh, I did not draw any. 
I did not turn to counter magic, so I am just going to keep my one interactive spell in Force of Vigor, which I don't think is a particularly good interactive spell against Oops All spells. Uh, and I'm going to put our 10 power in play, uh, and I will be killing my opponent on turn uh, 3, which is pretty late, uh, unless they keep a turn 2 kill, in which case I can Vigor, uh, like a turn 2 kill where I can Vigor mana. Um, they're going to be incentivized to play out their fast mana because of Mind Break Trap in my main. So there's, there's a world where this could win. And of course, if my opponent is on mono white, that means I just played 10 free power. I can't imagine losing. So let's see. Uh, this hand, uh, Vigor is also good if they ended up on jewel shops. Those are the three decks I would put Sandy on in the blind. Uh, Oops All Spells, jewel shops, and uh, mono white. So it looks like they are off of Oops All Spells. Maybe they are on... Uh, Island does not ring true for jewel shops to me. So maybe it's an Esper Tinker or an Esper P.O. deck. Uh, could be a Hole Breacher deck. Uh, I am going to force the issue here in case they're playing Hole Breacher by hitting both of their fast mana. Uh, let's see what happens. Just Flusterstorm maybe? Okay, that's fine. I don't think that's a huge deal. I'm definitely happy I didn't keep my uh, my seven card hand on the basis that they're probably on Oopsal spells because they ended up not being. When we have no cards in hand, we want to activate Bizarre and Upkeep to put away uh, Squeeze, possible Squeeze draws. Yeah, look, we hit a Squee. So now we are a Master of Death. Everything's a Squee. Uh, of course, if we had <laughs> held our hand here, we would have actually been able to put away two Squeeze, which is uh, fairly unlikely. What this does for you is it lets you draw on your next turn, and if you didn't have a Squee, uh, you would go up to two cards and then up to four and down to one, uh, which would let me keep something like a Mind Break Trap or a Hollow One. All right, so my opponent has to put in an answer to the current lethal threat on the table. Let's see what happens. All right, so it looks like Esper Tinker maybe. Could be still be Esper Pio. I am notably happy that Sandy is off of Oops All Spells. I don't have a very high rating of Oops All Spells. Okay, so Lavinia is a good answer here. Uh, Lavinia will stop me from playing spells, and it will stop them from dying. I do get a Squee back, though, and I now have a Force. Uh, I think it is still worthwhile to... Activate pre... Yeah. So, they're going to go to one, or are they going to go to... Or... I think they'll probably go to one. I don't really have... Yeah, I think, I, I think I'm just going to do this. It's pretty unlikely that I would hit... I can't actually hit... Um, Return Vengevine off of this hand, so... Uh, the only thing I can play through a Lavinia is a wasteland so we are going to activate post combat and um look for a wasteland as our last piece of interaction here uh we did hit avenge vine but obviously that doesn't do anything all right so uh, unfortunately my force is going to get countered by lavinia if i use it so my opponent has a uh, free reign to do something here but i don't know what do something involves because it would have to be uh, Swords plus, or, a tink or maybe just Tinker Sphinx. Um, oh, they are on PO. Interesting. I should have not F, uh, not F6 anymore, because I do have a Force now on the way back down. I'm happy. Uh, they are dead, and I'm sure they're not going to be happy about going 0-2 start in this prelim, but I do think that uh, PO is in a much better spot than uh, something like Oops All Spells. All right, so uh, P.O. is, uh, uh, this matchup is very bad for P.O. Uh, Lavinia is your best card by far. Um, definitely good for my opponent that they have Lavinia. Of course, we were on the play, so the Lavinia was uh, a bit too late. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take out the snap. I'm actually not going to take out the snapback because of Sphinx of the Steel Wind. I'm going to bring in the Krakus and bring in the snapback, and then I'm going to board out uh, some of the Noxious Revivals. And that's it. That's the only changes. Small changes. Uh, because you're basically pre-boarded for combo. Alright. Game two. My hand doesn't contain a bazaar. We still need to mulligan to bazaar. We have a bazaar. Doesn't have any interaction. Uh, which is definitely unfortunate. But definitely always keeping here. 
the biggest question is going to be based on what our opponent does. Are we uh, going to deploy our free cards into a possible tabernacle? Blue ancestral. Kind of bold to ancestral on their turn if they want to play around negation, which they probably do. But if they don't have a land drop, they are incentivized to ancestral on their turn. Uh, also beating Mindbreak Trap currently, so... Okay, now they're not beating Mindbreak Trap. Are they going to go for Ancestral? Okay, so they're going to Ancestral on my upkeep uh, to play around Negation and Mindbreak Trap. Which I don't mind. It's a play you can make. I don't always make this play against um, uh, Squee because you are on a time limit. Interesting. They don't have an Ancestral. All right, well then, in that case, I get to at least... Uh, hmm... I am actually going to wait on this bizarre activation because I want to be able to hit mental misstep counter. They don't have it. All right, now I'm just very confused. Uh, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm very confused. Maybe they wanted to play their emerald without getting trapped or something. Time walk. Okay. I'm just going to hold this Bizarre Activation. I um, think. I think that maybe they have Tabernacle. That's the, uh, it's possible they have Tabernacle. We have a pretty good end step double root walla. Play Wasteland. Play Hollow One. Can't really lose to Tabernacle that way. Okay, they did have an Ancestral. Weird. All right, well, now I'm going to activate this and try to find a Mental Misstep. Did not find a mental misstep. Um, what I'm going to do is pitch uh, one root walla so that next turn I can bring back this vine. I think bringing back this vine now may be overexposing us to, to tabernacle. Hmm. Certainly getting punished for not, like, going for a vine on turn one. Yeah, I'm going to hold and, and play double spell on, their, on my turn here. I don't know how that goes. Oh, the way that goes badly is if they hit exactly ne their one needle. Or maybe two needles. Hmm. You can't really play around everything, and I'm just not convinced I played around the right cards. I might have been supposed to play around Needle. I just felt I had a good opportunity to maybe... like I felt like they had an Ancestral. I feel like that was a read. And then I had an opportunity to maybe draw into Counter Magic for the Ancestral. Um, so I waited, and I also play around a bunch of other things, like a tabernacle there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't, yeah, so there is the tabernacle, okay. Um, I'm pretty happy with the outcome of this, all things considered. Um, I feel like I had the right ideas on what my opponent was doing. I felt like the reads that I made were correct there. Um, so now... Super easy. We actually get a second vine for our uh, our patients. All right. Well, I feel like this went really well. And now I get to play a wasteland, and then I'm not going to wasteland them right away. I will wasteland them at uh, their end step, so they can't, like... Yagmoth rebuy or play a second tabernacle, anything like that. And I have lethal on table, so they have to beat me somehow. I mean, they can have just have PO. I don't have any counter magic in my hand this game. Um, just kind of an odd game where I hit zero counter spells, but um, 12 free power is still quite good. It does feel like I read my opponent really, really well in this game. So here's the needle. All right, well, now I have to wasteland this tabernacle now. 
So if they do have a second tabernacle or a second tabernacle in their uh, sideboard, then they get some extreme value here. But I have to make that play. I don't have to make that play. I could technically hold Wasteland and then pay for one of my four drop, uh, four power creatures, but I want to present lethal to my opponent and make them beat it, right? So I think the biggest thing we're worried about here is them brainstorming into Black Lotus of Yogwu, returning Tabernacle. That would be extremely bad. There's also some bad things like... Um, Academy PO is pretty good here. I definitely wouldn't say we're out of the woods yet, but we are presenting a very quick clock and forcing our opponent to do something. All right, this is none of the most powerful lands, which makes me feel like we're in a good spot. They kind of probably need swords now. Um, swords will buy them a turn. Yeah, they have swords. Uh, balance is also quite good here. Uh, balance would work out pretty well for them. All right, so I am hoping to draw force. Uh, that's what I would like to draw. I drew master. Um, I am going to... What am I going to do? I think I'm just going to Wasteland their Mana Source. I think I'm more afraid of ha giving them a fourth mana for PO or a white mana than I am of them having like black, uh, you know, Opal Yogwill or something like that. And this also like rules out like, uh, I guess it doesn't change anything there. They're at one life. Do they have PO? Looks like they have PO. That's what I was trying to avoid with my Wasteland play, but they had another follow-up land or mana. Uh, this is why I really wanted to draw Force for turn. But... Oh, now I can actually Bizarre. Um, definitely going to do that in the first chance I get. I was not sure if they're supposed to pick up a Needle or not. It's probably pretty close. They are kind of screwed. They kind of need to win the game this turn. I don't know if, if picking up Needle helps them win the game enough because they can't really deploy a Tabernacle. I guess they can have a Balance still. They can still have Balance. So it's not, they can't really Tabernacle anymore because they played a land drop and their Time Walk is in their yard. So they have like uh, Kill Me or Tinker Sphinx or Balance. All right. They did not find anything there. We would have been able to draw into double force. No, no, just single force. We would have drawn force vigor, and I would have pitched bizarre uh, master vigor, probably. All right. We were able to uh, vanquish somebody, which is a nice thing that could happen. <laughs> All right. Fourth and final round of this prelim. If we can uh, get a victory over the Dom here, we will get 10 of the qualification points, which uh not a bad deal for going two two oh two two two, but we do have to vanquish Karate Dom first, so let's see what happens. No, that one's no good. No, that one is no good either. I swear my opponents keep more sevens than I do with this deck. That does seem like a problem. Probably factually inaccurate. But oh we're going deeper. We're going even deeper. Uh, I think I'd rather just put all these squeeze back in my deck. All right, we're going deeper. That's a keeper. Four cards to the bottom. One. Two. Three. <laughs> uh, four. If I activate two, I can keep one card. Maybe I will keep this chalice, actually. Uh, I get ranched if I draw a hollow one this way. Or a vengevine. 
Yeah, screw it. Going for the that going for the vine time. I guess that's why I were to draw a vine and not draw. <laughs> Justin's so smart. I do not get to pitch my uh, squee, but I'll take my six power and hope it beats my opponent's seven card hand. I sure doubt it, but you know, a man's got to try. And this is a good attempt for a mulligan to three. All right, Volcanic Island, interesting. Ragavan in 2023, interesting. Oh, I have double squee. I think we might win then. It's definitely a possible that we win on this one. Probably attacking with I'm just gonna leave the force in my hand. Uh not with everything. Probably I think the one damage doesn't matter, so make sure this Ragavan can never get in even with a lightning bolt. This is fine. I actually think we have a pretty solid long game now with double squee. Um, I guess if my opponent has a wasteland, that is not true, but. My opponent doesn't have a Luris, so that's interesting. Okay, fetch land down to 11. Green. Ah, interesting. Four color death rate. That's kind of annoying in this situation here. For sure. Still probably just powering through it. Another bazaar. Do I want to play another bazaar? I think I'd rather just hold open force. Maybe I'll just play second bazaar and hold open force. So my opponent has the ability to eat one of my squeeze. Wow, five color, but no Luris. Interesting. What does that mean? Yeah, that makes sense. Preordain. I am going to pitch the second master if I don't need to do. No, I will force that. And then I'll activate, draw. Um, I think I'm just gonna, yeah, I'll put this in my hand. Okay. There's a wasteland. Bengevine, Master, Pass. They can eat, they eat a land. And they have another death ray. Why'd they do that? Oh, they have a Tarmogoyf. Oh. I think I'm losing now, right? I kind of need to return this Vengevine this turn. And I don't have any more hollow ones. I have one hollow one. Mm, we might lose this game. Kind of needed a Wasteland for... Ooh, wow, that's a good draw. If I can get another Root Wallet or a hollow one. Snap back. That might be good later. Uh, this feels like an attack all moment. Put 
puts them to three. I really think I needed a wasteland on there. Ugh. I was going to say a wasteland on their um, green source in this game. Are they going to let me return this master? Probably shouldn't do that. Okay, they let me do it. Um, bounce Tarmogoyf, attack all, block, block, eat, go to five, go to one. So it's just bounce Tarmogoyf's attack with just the def, uh, just the Vengevine. Things are bad. I think we lost this game. My opponent's uh, Volcanic Island, Tropical Island, Tundra deck. A little too much to handle here. Kind of unfortunate. I could have played more aggressively on my attacks. The real thing is they had a tropical island and I was unable to... Ah, man, you know what we really could use? Um... If I had a noxious revival to stop a death right activation, that would be pretty good too. Okay, so they're going to fetch down to two. Uh-huh, and play a Tarmogoyf. Uh-huh. Um, so if I had a Guy's Cradle in my deck, that would be good. I drew the Noxious Revival a turn too late. That's unfortunate. I don't think I can s do much here. I don't even think like noxiousing a bazaar is particularly good. There's still two, four more life to be gained from the yard. <sighs> hmm. I could believe that I made some incorrect decisions in this game that led me to lose this game. Seems like it was a pretty close one. I don't think there's any openings anymore. All right, losing this game is uh, deeply disturbing. But I guess we did mulligan to three, so maybe it should not be considered deeply disturbing. <laughs> I did just realize that. We did mulligan to three in that game. I felt like I was so sure to win. I was uh, kind of upset that we lost. <laughs> uh, I have no idea. Let's try this. It could be that I played just too conservatively on my initial attacks and I ended up getting punished for it, right? That's kind of what I would suspect might have happened. Or my opponent just started with seven cards. That could also happen. All right. So, let's see if we get wastelanded. We did not get wastelanded to start. That's a good. Triple squee. Okay. I'm just gonna get these Ruwellas in play. I don't have any interaction at the moment, but if we were to get tabernacled off of double Ruwalla, I don't think I care. Oh, I have a Vengevine? Well, that's nuts. <laughs> I, I don't know if I realized I had a Vengevine here. I don't think I matter if I get Tabernacle too badly here. 
Yeah, that's fine. We still have triple squee. Don't think my opponent is winning this game currently. Especially with we do have the wasteland in play. Or in our hand, sorry. We got four damage in and, and lost our two root wallas, but we can always get our Vengevine back. Be a cool spot to have like a Riftstone portal. I know that's been played in the past. All right. Get our squeeze away. Activate again. Uh, I don't think we need a Vigor. I could have Noxious a Root Walla to the top. Hmm. I think I'm just going to get a. Uh, just gonna pitch one of these furies, and then we'll play a wasteland. I can consider noxiousing a root walla. I don't think it's necessary though, because I mean, I just have triple squee going. I'll eventually get this vine back. I don't need to use this wasteland right now either. I think I'm just gonna hold it. It's better as a card in my hand. Triple squee is just nuts. How, how is this deck gonna really compete against me drawing a million cards every turn? I didn't actually hit. Um, hmm. I just want all this counter spells. I don't know if I want to really pitch a fury. They don't really care. I don't think I need this noxious revival either. Just gonna keep all of the counters and play another wasteland. All right, is this uh, their first play of the game? That's not a land. Dak Faden. I don't think I care, but it doesn't really hurt me to counter it either. I might end up wastelanding the trough. I do want to be able to play a hollow one. I guess it's like pretty likely that this just dies to a Vengevine, but it might fix their hand. Let's just counter this. Got to use our mana anyways, or, or use our hand, right? Vengevine, squeeze, squee. Just in case I hit another Vengevine, which I didn't. All right. Yeah, it's pretty much impossible for my opponent to beat me in a long game where I'm drawing five cards a turn or whatever the hell that was. Whatever nonsense that was. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to keep these. Doesn't have any interaction, but it has so much power. Can't imagine not keeping this. This is a needle. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Needle is super bad for me here. All right. I definitely got wrecked by that.
All right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to end step and get rid of a squee. And then on the next turn, I'm going to go to end step and I'm going to get rid of a squee at a veg vine. And then on the next turn, I'm going to get rid of root walla root walla. Assuming my opponent doesn't play a, uh, a, a freaking Deathrite Shaman right here. They went bottom bottom. They might not have another land. They have a wasteland. Okay. I'm going to return my squee. And I'm going to go to end step. I'm going to pitch squee Vengevine. And then it's my opponent's turn. Now they can't stop me from uh, going for it. Obviously, I can't cast any spells until then, but... I'm going to go to my turn. I'm going to return Squee. Yep, and then we're going to go to end step. And I'm going to pitch Rootwalla, Rootwalla. And I lose to a Tabernacle, but that's the life we're living here. I put six free power in play. Do you have a Tabernacle? I have some counter magic, which is nice. Run in six. It does kill Root Wallas. I think I'm going to counter that. Oh, they had a Tabernacle anyways. All right, well, I made my attempt here. Unfortunately, my opponent had too many answers. Uh, that's a very strong hand against me on the play. Turn one needle with Wasteland and Tabernacle. It's going to be very hard for us to beat that, even with perfect draws. Can't ask for too much more as the opponent here. Um, I mean, we need to draw one of our three Vigors, basically. Yeah, I have to keep forcing. Can't beat that here either. Wow. So they had force as well. Yeah, I mean, not much to say. My opponent's hand was far too good for us to beat. They had all the tools. I did board out one Vigor, um, but I don't think they have like more than one needle anyways. Maybe they have two needles tops. I don't they could have ley lines. It's possible I'm supposed to keep in all four vigors, but that's probably the case. Don't think it matters that much though. All right, wow. So they played five, uh, four color, uh, Death Rite Shaman Walkers, Splashing Swords. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, this deck, I think, ha typically doesn't have, like, it has an okay time because Death Rite Shaman Wasteland is good, but it definitely re 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 needs uh, a little help, and they got a little help, so. Not much to say. I don't think we could have uh, played better than that. Maybe we could have sideboarded better, but it is what it is. Do not get any play points off of this expenditure, but I think we had some we had some amount of uh, reasonable, interesting games. This deck, uh, I don't know. It's never as good when I play it as it is against the decks that I play. That's for sure. We did beat PO, which um, is to be expected, but uh, I don't like the dredge matchup. I don't like the uh, blue-black Hull Breacher matchup, and I don't think that I like the <laughs> Death Rate Shaman Wasteland, uh, that matchup either. So, you know, you really want to pair against um, Oops All Spells, Coveted Jewel, P.O., uh, those kind of decks when you play this. And we, we didn't hit the right metagame sh uh, for this deck to sh really shine. So, I mean, you saw the power of the deck. We almost won a mold of three. We were very, very close to winning a mold of three. We obviously clobbered them in the game after that, but um, 
when you can't really get going uh, your engine going, then you, that's when this deck has the most problems. Also, it you know obviously has problems when you when you do when you mulligan too. So uh, I hope that was at least enjoyable content. Uh, more prelims should be coming in the future. After January 30th, there will be an additional Monday and Wednesday prelim, and I'm hoping to stream the Monday prelims starting uh, on the very first week. So new streams should be um, Mondays, 8 p.m. Eastern, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern for a league, and Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern for a challenge. Uh, those will all go up on YouTube, so if you can't watch live, don't worry. I'll see you then.